The first time I came across George's manuscript was about eight years ago. I read it in one night. Once we met him, it was even more, the, main, the book itself was great, but meeting him, there were stories he hadn't put into the book. And once we got those stories, we just said, oh, this is gonna be fantastic. Dennis Larry, my relationship with him was pretty special. He is actually responsible for the book being turned into a movie. And because the book had come out and it made the New York Times best saw list and then it just more or less went away like, like all books do. And he was in the bookstore and he saw the book blow. And of course he turned to the back and said, small town boy in Boston, da 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 da. And he read it, and he showed it to Ted Demi. They wanted to make a movie of it, and Dennis was going to play me. I think he would have done a good job. You know, he's a he's a Boston guy. I mean, I've seen Dennis in, in several films. Uh, He's a damn good actor. <laughs> Here I was locked up now, and they're gonna make a movie. George came up to me, and actually I hadn't asked him his name before. I didn't know what his name was. But he introduced himself and said that uh, I would soon be getting a call from a producer because a producer wanted to do a film of his life. And I pretty much said, sure, pal. That'll be an interesting call, won't it? And I did get a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty shocking. As months progressed, Dennis came to me and, and Ted, and I, I said, uh, Dennis is, is no longer going to play you in the movie. We took this to, to Mike DeLuca at New Line Cinema, and he wants an A actor. And Dennis said, well, I'm, I'm considered a B actor and they think this that much of the story that they want to get somebody a big name to play you. They were searching for for this A actor. We've got, uh, we're talking with Val Kilmer. And I liked that. And then it was uh, Sean Penn. And I, I was totally against that. And then it was uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, and when they told me Tom Cruise, I said, Tom Cruise has never even smoked a joint, for Christ's sake. I said, he's, you know, let's forget about that. Several months went by, and then I got a message from the council to, the, to call Ted. He said, guess who I've got to play you? And I said, uh, who? And he said, Johnny Depp. And I said, uh, who the hell is that? And he, <laughs> I mean, I was serious. I didn't, I had no idea who Johnny Depp was. And he said, how about, you never saw 21 Jump Street? Well, how about Edward Scissorhands? Did you ever see that? Okay, it's about this effeminate guy who cut women's hair and he had electric hands for scissors. He said, where the hell have you been all your life? And I said, I've been smuggling dope in airplanes. That's where I've been making love to women. And he said, just meet this guy. Please. And the whole day went by, and he never came. I went to the payphone, and I called Ted's office. Emma answered, who is Ted's assistant. And I said, you know what? I don't want to see the little son of a bitch. And I said, that's it. That's the end of it. He hasn't got enough respect to come to see me in prison waiting all fucking day. I said, I'm done with it. And she said, Listen to me, she said, and you listen good. I'm going to bring him there myself, and if you refuse to come out, she said, I'm coming inside there and pull you out of there. She said, you hear me, asshole? <laughs> and, and you know, it was so good that I said, okay, Emma. A name like Johnny Depp inside of a prison, uh, you've got all kinds of problems because Everybody wants a piece of the pie. They want to come up and see him or meet him. The one uh, told Paul, he said, uh, he said, if I ever let Johnny Depp in here during his visiting hours, he said, I'll have a, a, a female riot on my hands. Johnny showed up and he came and he was, uh, his hair was, was 
um, stringy and his, he had a leather jacket on which was ripped and, uh, and, and holes in his jeans and old scuffed up boots and, and I looked at him and I said, where the hell you been? And I said, he looked like he'd been sleeping in a dumpster. He said, I know, I was up all night thinking of, I wanted to bring you something. I, I, had, I couldn't figure what to bring you. And he said, but I found something. And I said, well, what the hell is it? And he handed me a book. And when I took it and I looked at it, it was On the Road by Jack Kerouac. And he said, this is my Bible, man. He said, I carry this with me everywhere I go. I, I said, I think we're gonna be okay, John. I, I felt a deep sense of responsibility for George, especially because he's, <clears throat> bless him, I mean, he's sitting in a prison cell. And then you feel that moment when it kind of everything sort of, boom, everything falls into place and you feel the guy, you know, you feel that guy in you. My job was to walk around the room and keep telling stories to him. And he wouldn't say anything. And he, he basically studied me. What is it, 18 years ago, the film came out? People come up to me and tell me that they've seen this movie 50 to 100 times. What in the name of Christ, 100 times watching Blow? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I might pay once to go see Jesus walk on the water, but that's about it. Truly, one of the, one of the most insane, fun rides I've ever been on. And uh, most of that is because of Ted Demi. And I think he's great. I think he's one. Of, he's he's a great director. The fact that I can make a movie called Blow and it can be distributed by a major motion picture company, I think we're making some ground here. What's next after Blow? How do we top it? I don't know. Rehab. I think the next film's called Rehab.